What is up everyone? So today it's time for part two of the iMac saga um, because the hard drive died I'm now going to replace it. I ordered a new one. It's not here yet but it should arrive today I hope but we can start with taking it apart anyway so um, yeah let's go ahead. Look at what has arrived just now, the hard drive, perfect. So now the first thing we have to do is to remove uh, uh, some screws at the bottom here. Um, it's difficult to see with the tripod, but uh, yeah. Uh, I've taken out this screw. There are some more here. I have to take out and then uh, we can remove the casing. Okay, so I've removed the screws and the RAM door. Now I have to lift off this, um, yeah, the front casing at the bottom, as you can see here. But I have to hold, hold, I have to use both hands because I have to press these buttons in. I'm not sure whether I can find an angle where you can see uh, that. Okay, so now, now um, I have to put it upright again and use a credit card to go into the event slot here um, to release some clips, some plastic clips to get it out. Okay, so I think I have to slide it in here. Yeah, but it's interesting that it opens at this side when I push it in here. Let's see what happens. This side. I finally released the clip. Let's open this carefully here. Okay. So at the top there's uh, a connector here for the webcam which we can unplug and another one here we can also unplug. Nice. So we have now the front completely disconnected from the main body. Okay, the next step is to carefully lift um, this protection shield here. Okay, so we have to do it like that so that a little piece is actually um, remaining on the machine. Yeah, like that. Oh, and we, uh, <laughs> I can see already the dust. Uh, here's a little bit of dust in the fan, but it's not too bad. But I will definitely clean this <laughs> when I'm uh, when it's uh, open already. So yeah. Okay, now we have to remove this connector here, which is secured with two screws. Okay, we can disconnect the cable. Nice. Now we have to remove the tape on the side of the display here. Like that. So the tape is removed and now there are four screws in uh, every corner of the display. Uh, we have to remove so we can lift the display because underneath, I think here or here, is the hard drive. So. Um, yeah, on this side is the optical drive, so I think on this side is the hard drive. Now we should be able to lift the display. So... Yep. It's working. Carefully. Now there's something connected here. That we have to remove. Yeah. Oh, okay, so the hard drive is actually in the middle of the computer. That's interesting. Okay. 
So is this fully disconnected now? Yes, I think so. Let's remove this tape here. Okay, nice. Fully disconnected. Awesome. So one fan is here. Uh, let me show you the inside of the computer. I never seen an iMac before in on the inside. So here's one fan at the bottom. Here's another one. Um, here's a big heatsink. Here's probably the processor. Here's some chipset. Uh, thermal sensor, also one on the hard disk. We have to put uh, this also onto the new hard disk. Um, yeah, there's actually quite a little bit of room left up here. Okay, now we can actually remove the hard drive. There are some cables rooted uh, here, so let's pull them out. Oh, here already comes the hard drive. Um, first we have to disconnect the thermal sensor. We have to put this on the new hard disk. And yeah, we can just lift it out. This broken thing. <laughs> and disconnect it. So this is a Seagate drive, 160 gigabytes, original Apple drive. So probably also the drive that it shipped with. Come on, focus. Yeah, but uh, yeah, it seems like that it's broken. This is actually the first Seagate drive that broke on or broke that I owned. M most of my drive were um, Western Digital drives back in the day. And uh, yeah, a lot of them also died, but uh, yeah, this was actually the first Seagate drive to die on me. So yeah, now we have to uh, remove the bracket and transfer the bracket and the new uh, and the thermal sensor to the new hard, uh, hard drive. But of course, we can only do that if we actually unbox the new hard drive. So. I've gone with a hard drive and not with a SSD because uh, I got this five, uh, 500 gigabyte enterprise hard drive for 20 uh, euros. My other option uh, would have been a 120 gigabyte SSD for 40 euros, but I think 120 gigs would be not enough for me. And then the SSD with 250 gigabytes or something like that would have been a lot uh, more expensive than this hard drive. So that's why I decided for the hard drive. Okay, so here we go. Bubble wrap. Oh, so this drive was nicely secured. Very nice. I like that. So as you can see, Western Digital 500 gigabytes enterprise storage. So this should have a longer lifetime statistically than a um, uh, normal hard disk, uh, normal hard drive or con uh, uh, consumer hard drive. But uh, yeah, I just found this one cheap, and that's why I got it. Okay. So yeah, this drive is also a lot heavier than the old one. Okay, so let's transfer the thermal sensor. This is uh, simply glued. Oh, sorry, you can't see anything. <laughs> so the thermal sensor is just glued to the board, uh, to the hard disk, if I remember correctly. Oh, it's actually glued pretty strong on here. It almost breaks my tool here. <laughs> Ah, there we go. Yeah. Oh, this is some nasty glue. Okay, so it was in this direction. So we can put it on the new one, like somewhere here. That should be fine. 
it still sticks very good with the rest amount of uh, glue. First off, these are also Torx uh, screws. Oh. So we can simply unscrew these pins here and uh, the bracket on the other side also with Torx screws. Nice. So the old hard drive is free and can die now, it's already dead. So uh, yeah, let's transfer this to the new drive, to the new shiny drive. I hope I put the screws in the correct holes, but I think so. Okay, so the mounting is secured to the drive. I'm now going to uh, clean the fence a little bit and after that um, yeah, we can start reassemble everything and uh, yeah, I think I, I will show you after the cleaning process everything and then yeah, I can build, uh, put everything back together and yeah. So the new hard drive is in. I've cleaned the fence a little bit, not too much because I don't have compressed air or something, but uh, I think it's fine. Looks looks good so far, so uh, yeah. So I will start reassembling everything now and then we can start it up and hope that it finally works. So here it is, fully reassembled. So uh, the mouse is already plugged in. So let's plug in the keyboard and hit the power button. pressing down the alt key, uh, the option key. <laughs> okay, we see Untitled, which is the USB stick. So let's boot off that. Okay, so let's select English. And uh, let's go to Disk Utility. And here is the new hard disk. 500 gigabyte Western Digital, perfect. So let's erase it to Macintosh HD <coughs> and erase, erase, perfect. So now we can go ahead, select Macintosh HD, hit install and now we just have to wait another time. Okay, we are rolling again. So let's select Germany, German keyboard, and let's connect to my Wi Fi. Okay, I don't need uh, location services. Let's enter my Apple ID. Let's agree to terms and conditions. Yeah, I'm aware of that. Uh, iCloud. Do I need iCloud? Uh, not for now. Okay, let's choose a password and let's choose a nice picture. Mm, let's go with the piano for this one. Creating your account. I'm not sure if you can hear the hard drive. It's not the quietest, uh, but it's fine. And it's not making any weird noises uh, like the one before that is now dead. So Berlin, uh, let's skip the registration and start using your Mac. Nice, so we are really rolling again. Here we go, awesome. So let's do the updates first. Right now I, um, I have on the USB stick already the 10.8.5 combo um, package, so Let's install that. So let's download the security update and install it also right away so that we uh, can one, do one reboot and everything uh, will be installed and fine. So let's search for um, 10.8. Here we go, 06, that's the newest one. So download that and then sh we should be up to date which is awesome. So I will install everything and uh, oh, 
the, the update I will set up uh, the settings like I want them again and yeah then we should uh, we should be good to go with another reboot so I will be back soon so we are booting again I couldn't install the security update because uh, after installing the um, 8.5 Compa update I always had some weird uh, glitches so I had to restart immediately. So let's try uh, whether the rehacking also works after the security update. But uh, the performance overall is pretty nice, um, it's pretty snappy. Of course uh, starting apps is not the fastest with the HDD but since this is not my main setup I'm fine with it. So overall I'm very satisfied with, with the machine till now. So the security update is installing. Um, for the browser I've gone with uh, Firefox. So Firefox is not supported anymore with Mountain Lion but there's uh, an extended support version that I've downloaded now for, uh, of Firefox 45 I believe. I think I can use this for a little while. Um, I won't do any security important stuff on here so just a little bit of YouTube or something. Yeah, so yeah as you can see Firefox extended support range or extended support something uh, version 45.5. This also runs still on Snow Leopard surprisingly so they dropped uh, support for 10.6, 10.7 and 10.8 on the same uh, on the same version which is quite interesting. Okay so it rebooted without hacking the system again. Uh, let's see whether that worked. So it's booting normally that's good but let's see whether we get any glitches or something like that because I had graphical glitches before uh, after updating uh, system so let's see okay so this is not looking too good I have the beach ball I can't do anything um, yeah so we definitely need a rehack and we know that the rehack from the recovery partition doesn't work uh, from the first video so um, yep let's find out what we have to do now okay I was able to launch the patcher manually uh, <coughs> it's located in the folder um, hack mac post, uh, mac post factor mcpc and then um, the launch patcher dot shell so I'm running this with sudo now again and let's hope that uh, this fixes my problem. Okay so this is the full path. I'm now locked in as root and it, let's try it again. But it doesn't work, it immediately shuts down again. If I don't run it with root permissions it works but uh, it can't replace the files so I'm not sure um, how to fix that. So okay it seems like uh, that it has worked. So graphic support is definitely there. Um, yeah, 10.8.5 is installed. So what I did, I ran um, the launch patcher as without sudo because with, without sudo it would not run. And then I ran a graphics.sh which patched, patched the graphics as sudo. That worked perfectly and yeah. I'm now running on 10.8.3, um, uh, 10.8.5, sorry, with the security update. So, under the updates um, tab here, we should only see applications, application updates and the Mac App Store update, which I'm not going to install because it requires a reboot. So I can start uh, installing all of my applications now. That's awesome. So let's connect to my um, network drive and then I can install everything. Good morning everyone. It is the next day. Let me power on the iMac first. Um, so let me talk a little bit about the machine while it boots up so you can see uh, how long it takes. I installed all of the programs I, I want to use on this machine yesterday. 
and I down, uh, downloaded all the samples for Logic and MainStage. I show you those programs later if you don't know them. And uh, yeah, the machine works perfectly. It's pretty fast. The boot up is uh, the boot uh, the boot up is also not that bad as you can see. So I'm using um, this keyboard from my main setup, uh, which is a Logitech uh, K811. And uh, the handy thing is it has free as Bluetooth storage uh, storages. So I have on one is my um, MacBook Air and on two is the iMac. So if I select two, um, it will connect uh, to the iMac as you can see. So I can use the same keyboard on both machines. So let me enter my password. Okay. So the machine works perfectly smooth. Uh, as you saw, the animation was also per perfectly smooth. Oh, I don't want iMessage here. I also don't want FaceTime. Yeah, um, time machine is set up. Um, here are the programs that I use. Firefox, uh, Contact 5 from um, Native Instruments, MainStage and Logic Pro um, 10. And uh, as you can see, I have now something about so yes, 70 gigabytes um, used on this uh, disk, so I have a lot of spare. And it will probably fill up um, quite quickly, I think. The machine is working perfectly fine now, no hiccups, no uh, weird stuff happening or, or something. So uh, the, the mountain lion hack, um, the Mac Post Factor is working really great. And uh, yeah, it's it's really a joy to use. It doesn't seem 10 years old to me. Um, it's quite snappy and everything. So I think uh, one one good upgrade on this machine would be um, more than two gigabytes of RAM. So let's open up Activity Monitor on this freshly booted machine, and let's go to um, System Memory. As you can see, it's not that bad. I still have around one to three gigabytes of free RAM after booting up, so um, that's plenty to of left to do with. But if you have some tabs open in Firefox and uh, playing a YouTube video or something, um, it quickly can get full. So uh, yeah, but for for now it's uh, fine. So let me start Contact 5. With Contact 5 you can uh, use a lot of high quality um, samples and stuff like that from native instruments. So I have three uh, pianos here. Each of them is around five to six gigabytes and uh, on disk space. And uh, yeah, I've connected my keyboard my uh, Yamaha something keyboard uh, via MIDI and a little MIDI adapter here to the iMac and uh, yeah then I can play piano using my headphones with a really nice quality uh, high quality and really good sounding um, piano so the Maverick is more like uh, a little bit of an old-school honky-tonky kind of sound uh, the grandeur is more uh, like a concert concert piano and the gentleman is uh, an upright piano which sounds also quite nice and uh, yeah it's it's a lot of fun uh, to play with these really nice uh, samples and uh, yeah that's what what I use contact 5 for and it's working perfectly I was using contact 3 on my power book uh, so a little bit of an older version, older samples, and uh, yeah, it maxed out the CPU at, uh, sometimes. And he here with the Core 2, um, I have plenty of room left with the processing power, which is really, really nice. But one thing to note, uh, this is not the latest Contact 5, because this doesn't run anymore under Mountain Lion. So I think uh, the, the limit on this machine is the OS support and uh, not the processing power for me uh, for my use at least which is a little bit sad but uh, yeah what can you do <laughs> as you can as you can hear maybe um, I put the headphones next here um,
Yeah, I can play piano uh, with it. So that's my main use for uh, practicing piano, playing piano. And then I have main stage, with, which is an application from Apple. I don't know how um, how commonly known it is. Um, I've never seen it used in the field or something, but it allows you to. Uh, it's it's not meant for recording. It's more like um, if you are on a stage and you're playing live with uh, MIDI um, keyboards or with a guitar or stuff like that. You can um, use a lot of samples with this, and also um, you can connect your guitar to a microphone to the microphone input and use it as an amplifier which is uh, quite nice with effects and everything so if we go to keyboard let's use synthesizers there should be then a lot of uh, samples we can use yeah so for example here 80s polysynth Yeah, uh, so <laughs> there are a lot of sounds uh, in here and of course you can add a lot more if you want. These are all the standard sounds, they are about 50 gigabytes. I downloaded them um, directly with Mainstage. Uh, and yeah, Mainstage is also an older version because the newest one is not uh, supported anymore which is quite sad because the new versions have uh, some more samples that are, that are really cool I think and uh, yeah I never used this program before because it was not available on a power PC maybe a, uh, an older version was but I never used it so um, yeah I will try with, I will play with that a lot I think and then if I ever want to record something I have Logic Pro um, here I also want to install GarageBand to try uh, that and compare them a little bit and yeah it's also an older version uh, same story as with main stage but um, yeah I think the performance for for that machine is really nice uh, so there are no hiccups if I'm doing something like that I've never done a big project or something on here yet but uh, I think uh, that it will handle most of it that I want to do fine which is really really cool and yeah so we can see all of the samples here again it will be a lot of fun to play with this I think what I also uh, will do is um, playing with sheet music and here is the the full screen mode uh, of the pre of preview is really nice for that because uh, it gives you two pages side by side uh, right in front of my keyboard so that's perfect. I can uh, go to the next page with my mouse or with the keyboard. That's really nice. And uh, yeah, oh man, how slow the ani animations were back then for the full screen mode. They're a lot faster now. <laughs> Crazy. Okay. So for the for the end, I think it might be interesting to do some um, benchmark tests. So let's get Geekbench. Geekbench, Geekbench. Oh, it's already Geekbench 4, okay. Let's see whether we can run Geekbench 4. Oh no, we can't. Okay, 10 to 10 at 5 or later. So, what's with Geekbench 3? Let's see whether Geekbench 3 works. We can also do a little uh, quick YouTube test. So, let's select a trailer here. And let's... Uh, Let's select 720p. <coughs> so it's not perfectly smooth, but it's all right. Let's see what happens with 1080p. Okay, it's a little bit choppy. But, oh yeah, it's choppy, <laughs> but um, I have a really, really nice video application that can also play back videos from YouTube. Uh, it's a command line application and it's called MVP, I believe. Yes, it's MVP and it's a really, really nice video player. 
uh, which also supports uh, hardware acceleration. I'm pretty sure that it will play uh, YouTube perfectly with this. So I'm going to install that and show you that at the end. So, but let's first try Geekbench. So we can only run the um, the 32-bit mode. But uh, let's start. So here we go, nearly finished. Um, the machine is very quiet. It gets a little bit warm up here, but uh, not much. And uh, the fans are really, really quiet. Oh, okay, and it's finished. So let's see. Oh, okay, so we get a single core score of nearly 1100 and a multi core score of 2000, <coughs> nearly 2000. I don't know whether that's good for, uh, for a machine from this year, but um, I think the PowerBook got like 400 or something like that. Um, so it's a lot faster than the PowerBook and uh, the dual core also helps um, with multitasking. So pretty pleased, pretty pleased. Really the real life performance is uh, more important than the Geekbench score or something like that, but uh, just if anyone's interested in it, um, a good 2000 uh, at a multi-core multi score, which is nice. Yeah, okay, so uh, let me install the video player so I can uh, show you that because that's really cool. Okay, so let's open uh, VLC. Okay, and let's uh, open. Uh, oh, what have we said? What? Open network? Oh, yeah, okay. Oh, and it's not playing bad back in full HD, okay. Looks like 720p or something. Okay, and it seems to have frozen. But I have a better idea. Let's just try a video file that I have on my network drive. <coughs> so let's try um, let's try a Ghibli uh, video because they are I'm sure that they are full HD. Oh the colors are just so nice on this display. Yeah it looks perfectly smooth. Nice. Oh, the display is really nice. I really like the display quality. I have to watch a film on this. <laughs> it's really nice, man. Yeah, but enough for that. So it can play back full HD with hardware acceleration or stuff like that. Um, just YouTube in the browser will not work with full HD. At least not in Firefox, maybe it works in Safari, but Safari is so outdated uh, on Mountain Lion, so I don't want to try that. But yeah, there you have it. Um, that is the machine, that's what I'm using it for, mainly for my keyboard. Uh, I will probably also watch some YouTube videos and stuff uh, if I want to learn a song or something. I can look it up on uh, YouTube, so it's mainly for music. 17 inch is enough for that, that's perfect because the resolution is quite good and uh, yeah, mountain lion is running stable, that's all I want. Um, I don't want a machine that crashes and I'm really happy I got this machine. Uh, yeah, I think that's it for this video and now with a successful happy ending. Um, so everything is installed, everything works. We have a bigger and a faster hard drive and uh, not the old dying one which is awesome and yeah I hope you enjoyed this video and thank you very much for watching if you made it to the end leave a comment down below and uh, I will see you in the next video cheers bye bye